Before this week's meeting of Central Bank of Nigeria's Monetary Policy Committee, there were raised hopes across the financial sector that the Apex Bank would consider a reduction of the national interest rate, which for several months now has been maintained at 13.5%. But it wasn't to be. Instead, the CBN announced the reduction of interest rate on its intervention loans from 9% to 5%, as well as an extension of moratorium from one year to two years to buffer the Nigerian economy from the impact of the coronavirus outbreak. But despite this critical intervention, micro and macroeconomic indices seem to have been badly shaken by developments elsewhere, including the rising numbers of deaths from COVID-19 across the world and the yet-to-be-identified vaccine for its cure. Several countries, including the United States, have been slashing their interest rates in order to make more liquidity available for individuals and small businesses. But not Nigeria. Why then is the country bucking the trend? We shall be looking at all of that now by talking to Yabagi Sani, a political economist, national chairman and former presidential candidate of the Action Democratic Party during the 2019 general elections. Welcome to the program, sir. Good morning. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. How are you? Show, yes. Thank you for having me. Thank you for honoring our invitation. Well, I mean, you must have listened to Adesua's Thank introduction. Basically, the uh, Nigerian government has taken a number of measures to mitigate the adverse economic uh, effect of, one, the coronavirus uh, pandemic, and two, uh, the uh, crisis with uh, oil prices in the international market. Now, what's your assessment of some of these uh, measures that you can just describe as uh, economic stimulus package at one level and an attempt at another level uh, to protect the interests, the livelihood of the uh, average Nigerian, both on the side of the central bank, which has introduced a number of measures, and also uh, the federal government, which has also introduced a number of fiscal measures, including reduction in the pump price of petrol. Yeah, well, thank you very much. I think uh, the government, in the first instance, is doing quite uh, a lot, although much is still uh, expected in terms of addressing the immediate challenges that we have as a result of this uh, virus, which is uh, a very, uh, it's a dramatic, you know, uh, uh, turn of events in terms of the health of the citizens of not only Nigeria, but all over the world. Uh, one would expect that government would uh, concentrate more on building the, the, the health facilities, facilities we have in this country. Like we have seen other countries, governments are building hospitals, they are, they are building, uh, they are providing uh, PPE, that is uh, uh, personal protector, I mean pro, uh, uh, protection uh, equipment, and also other medical intervention that is required. Yes, the department in charge of, uh, that's NCDC, uh, they are doing quite a lot, but we expect the government to come out with pragmatic you know, actions like these facilities which I have talked about. I know that, yes, we have challenges in terms of the economy, that uh, outposition of economy, and uh, also our own approach to governance itself is one thing that I think one will have to also uh, address because we are concerned that we have not had from the president, the presidency as it's supposed to be, because when you look at what other nations are doing, other countries are doing, you see their president standing uh, side by side with their experts, you know, they are, and, and the only reason why the president or the head of states of those countries are there is to give confidence, to assure the nationals that this is not something that's beyond the capacity of the government. And this is the leadership that is required, because when you see your, your president talking to you, you have to believe him. And you have, Mr. Uh, we have President Mahmoud Bawari, who is loved by, by, by the millions of this country if we go by the results of the elections we have had. And the passion that people talk about Mahmoud Bawari, uh, I think if he comes out and talk to Nigerians, people would believe more in what is, what is happening and the people will now be, uh, be attracted to help because it's beyond government. Government alone cannot do it. You need the private sector to come in. You need other donors, like uh, international donors, uh, like you, I'm sorry, you must have heard that the G20 met, you know, on a virtual 
World uh, Conference, and they pledged to put about five trillion dollars into the to inject into the world economy. So, what are we doing? Are we engaging them properly? How much are we getting from that? Nigeria being the largest country, the biggest uh, economy on the continent of Africa, we must have a big chunk of that. And knowing that, we also have some militating factors like the issues of infrastructure, the issues of disease, the issues of banditry, the issues of you know the economic retrogression that we have we have, uh, we have experienced uh, uh, for, for for a while now. So yes, the government is doing a lot, but a lot more is required. You know that empathy, that compassion that Mr. President personifies or will personify is absent, and we want it to show so that all these experts that are talking to Nigerians, Nigerians will now believe them and buy in into what they want us to do. Like the last man, I mean the the director of uh, NCDC says that it is not about force; it's about compassion. Is about being uh, able to get the, uh, the buy-in of the people so that on their own they will do the needful. That is, wash your hands, use sanitizer, uh, 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 stay at home. These are things that you want people to do, and the only thing that government can do, because government cannot stop, you know, the, the spread of this virus. You know, it has been shown in other countries that it is not only these economic measures that will stop this, uh, the, the spread of this virus, because once the gene is out of the bottle, it, the rest is uh, uh, how the disease itself, you know, spreads. And that's why containment is very important. Asking people to stay at home is very important. Government to show passion, to show commitment, to show concern is also very important. So I think, yes, Central Bank has taken some measures in terms of reducing the, uh, the, the lending rate from the Central Bank from 9% to 5%, which is good. Uh, yes, we expect Central Bank to go further by reducing the interest rates from 13% to maybe something like 9% or something like that. But I'm also aware the central bank is also concerned about the inflationary factor, uh, inf inflationary effect of such uh, uh, actions. Per perhaps that's why they have not done what is, uh, they're supposed to do. And one thing again, it will be like digression, but it's important. I want the fiscal policies of this country to be to be handled by the government officials, not central banks. Central banks should not double into fiscal policies. They should only re uh, stop at talking about monetary policies, like how do you ensure stability of Naira? How do you ensure that we have a, 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 an environment that is stable in terms of monetary and then financial uh, and the price, you know, uh, stability of the of the economy in the economy? So, but because because I hear you hear in the papers, you read in the papers that central bank has issued. Uh, has, has, has stepped in to give stimulus, uh, stimulus uh, package of $2.2 .2 billion. That's one trillion naira, and it's going to do more. It's not central bank doing it. Central bank doesn't have money. It's just the banker of the, of the government. They don't own the money. It should be either the Minister of Finance that should be talking about all these things so that central bank can concentrate on the monetary policies and, and the price stability, which is very, very crucial at this point in time. So, like I say, it's my direction, but it's important. We want to project ourselves as, as a nation that is organized. You don't have one institution doubling into other institutions uh, matters, and then at the end of the day, you don't get the desired results. So that's the point I want to make in that aspect. Sani, if, if I can come in here. Uh, many emerging economies on the continent, including Nigeria, prior to COVID-19, were already at the precipice of negative growth. Uh, there are fears that they cannot afford elaborate stimulus uh, to cushion the effects of COVID-19. Uh, what is the worst case scenario for Nigeria, in your own opinion? And secondly, you talked about the federal government interventions and measures taken. Uh, the 2020 budget, I would like to talk about that as well. Uh, our Benicio had been revenue challenged. But we saw that committee set up by Mr. President uh, to cushion the effect of COVID-19 uh, revise the oil benchmark to $30, slash uh, capital uh, projects by 20 percent, and then recurrent by 25 percent. Do you think that this will move the needle? No, I don't think it's enough because thirty dollars per barrel is unrealistic. Today, if you look at the uh, oil, the plat, you know, it's uh, it's less than twenty-seven dollars already, and it's it's going to go down because look at what is happening. You are you are getting a lockdown of uh, the most of the economies in this world, like United States and others, you know, which means the, the whatever consumption of crude oil you have today may even go down by another twenty percent because about three billion, you know, people in the world are now under lockdown. So how do you the consumption will go down? So the price differently, you know, this. this 
this economy, the price will go down below the, the benchmark that, uh, that the federal government has come up with. And also, I think even the production capacity that they have, they have said they are going to achieve of 2.1 billion barrels per day, it's not realistic. You know, we have to tell Nigerians the gospel truth that we are in a time, this is like war time, it's not, uh, it's just normal times, that we should be able to accept some of these bitter, I mean, swallow these bitter pills at this point in time, so that going forward, we would have uh, taken advantage of this adversity and then be able to run our lives, you know, in a normal way, in a much more progressive way after the, the, uh, the, 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 the after this, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the COVID-19, you know, uh, uh, problem that we're having today. Uh, and and uh, the other issue is reducing the price of uh, petrol by 20 naira or something like that. I think that is, that is uh, really begging the issue. What government should do at this point in time is take advantage of the fact that you have a scenario that has pushed you and forced you to now price your, uh, your refined product in, uh, with the crude oil, as crude oil moves that, the modeling aspect of it, then de deregulate the sector, because when you deregulate the sector, a lot will accrue to, to Nigerians. You will not be spending trillions of naira on, on, uh, on a fountain subsidy that uh, they use to take people's money. And you will also be able to develop that sector. You'll be able to encourage you know, private sectors to come into building more refineries like Dangote is doing, you know, so that and then even the ones that government has will now be become operational because if you if you if you go on price regime where you are you are you are administratively fixing the price of this crude oil you are you are asking for fraud in the system and it's, in the, it's endemic in the system today so we should take this opportunity to ensure that we do the, all those difficult uh, the policies that we could not uh, embark upon government should summon the political will now and take advantage of this situation and then regulate that sector of the economy and also not only that ensure that we have transparency Transparency and accountability in, in, the, in the way the crude oil and gas sector, I'm talking about the offering now, the, our crude oil is sold. Today we don't know how much crude oil we are selling, we don't know how much we are producing. The, the stealing is rampant in that sector. The officials in that sector are stealing us blind, and we know, and figures are coming out. So if we continue in that fashion, there's no way our economy will catch up with uh, its peers. So these are things that government must now take advantage of this situation and embark on those difficult measures so that our economy, like I said, will be able to achieve its mandate, which is greatness for the people of this country. Well, I mean, for me, the biggest challenge that we face is that if you look at all the macroeconomic indicators, uh, we seem to be having a very serious economic crisis. Some economists have predicted that in the face of subdued Let's economic uh, uh, growth and output, uh, we're likely to go back into recession which was where we were in 2016. Exactly, we're already in recession. Our excess crude account is, uh, yeah. is uh, down to $71 million. Our trade, uh, balance exactly. of trade Pro deficit two, is going up. In the first quarter, we're likely to have a trade deficit of about $3 billion. Uh, uh, Revenue is down in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, spot price of uh, oil. The subnationals, the state governments, they are also facing fiscal turbulence. So when you say government should do this, government should do this, the Minister of Finance should do this, where is the money going to come from? What is the big lesson that we have learned in the face of COVID-19 and the crisis in, uh, in, the, uh, in the oil market? Well, I, I think uh, you have uh, hit the nail on the head that I think CBN should be realistic with, uh, with us, you know, because I'm talking about now the, 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 uh, the, the maintenance of, the, of our foreign reserve in order to ensure that the, the value of Naira is stable. I don't know if you don't have money to put to plow into your foreign reserve, how do you maintain the value of the Naira in a realistic manner? So we should, we should also allow Naira to float, you know, to a very large extent. We shouldn't have multiple rates, you know, of, of currencies in, in, that, in, 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 in our uh, foreign exchange policy. You know, time has come for Nigeria to rise up to the occasion and then tell nationals, you know, the gospel truth, let them know that we are in a crisis situation and we need to take these hard decisions like you are saying. Our foreign reserve, I mean, our, our excess crude account has depleted in within a very short period of time from, from almost $2.3 billion to $76 million. I don't know what they did with that money. And then, and then, and then, uh, and then you have a situation where you are still saying you are defending the Naira. I don't know how much, how, how much we can go with that when, when your price of crude oil, which is the major source of income, 
to for this country, ninety nine percent or ninety percent of our revenue is from is from crude oil and gas, uh, foreign 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 money. So if that has dropped by fifty percent and it's all dropping, and you still uh, playing the ostrich uh, the, the something that you you are still okay that you can maintain the naira, it's not true. We can't, you know. And we're in recession already. Look at in America now, the 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 uh, the, the unemployment rate is uh, about three point three million people have have, have have signed up for for uh, air employment benefit, and and that those are the ones that we are able even to do it within the shortest possible time. So so and then whatever happens in America, like the consumption of crude oil and gas, you know, will happen will affect us because they are the major consum consumers of crude of, uh, of, of crude oil and gas, you know, uh, in, in the world. So if they, their consumption is going down, which means the price will further go down. That's not there's nothing no magic that you can perform about that. That's why people are saying that governments cannot in any way stop the effect of this uh, uh, COVID-19 on the economy and also on the health of the, the death. You can't, you, can't, you can't do anything. Like one uh, 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 expert has said in America, the, uh, Dr. Uh, Fauci, I don't know, I've forgotten the name. He says that the COVID, you know, is dictate the timeline. You can't dictate the timeline for this disease, you know, for, I mean, for this infection. So what it means is that government will only introduce things to ameliorate you know, the effects of this disease. And that's what we are saying. They should concentrate more on the provision of health facilities, you know, how to protect the health of the people. Because if you, you are busy trying to protect your economy, you know, uh, who is going to benefit from that economy? You need people to run the economy. You need Nigerians to be alive before they can enjoy this economy. So let's concentrate more on intervening in the, in the, in the health sector. That is the crucial thing. And like, and like you have said, the crude oil, which is the main honor of foreign exchange for Nigeria, is going down in terms of a price, and that there's nothing, no magic about it. Our reserve is not even there anymore to, to defend the Naira. So it's a reality, it's a crisis situation, and, and I think this is the time you need leadership, you know, because government's supposed to think out of the box, and that's what we expect from this government. Well, thinking out of the box, I'd ask you a question, you know, where would uh, government get the money from yeah. uh, to at least survive, take Nigeria forward? Will you recommend quantitative easing, which is another word for ways and means? Or will you recommend that uh, government officials take pay cut, which is, the, which is what is being proposed in Kenya by so, President uh, Uru Kenyatta? He and his uh, deputy, for example, they've, they've given up 80% of their of their salary entitlements and are following suit. Or will you recommend that now is the time for us to go back to the land and begin to farm so that we can begin the process of diversification in this season of crisis? We can do both, actually, because we need people to be on the farm, too. I mean, I mean I'm not talking about uh, this, uh, the old way, I mean, of uh, mechanized farming. We need that. But most, more importantly, I've said it before somewhere, that government must look at its recurrent expenditure, especially salaries. These uh, over bloated salaries that we pay, especially the National Assembly members and government officials, and, over, and, and then such a large, unnecessary, you know, uh, government uh, machinery that we carry, you know, which you don't need, you know, uh, all, all sorts of of retinue of uh, advisors and what have you that uh, had no value to anything at all other than just to sit there and then create more problems. We should get rid of those things. You know, for now, we are in a worse situation. It's a crisis situation. We, then Mr. President should, should come out. That's why I'm saying he needs to show leadership now. He needs to tell the general that I'm even for going 90% of my salary and everybody, the minister should, should follow, 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 follow suit. National Assembly should also come, come, come out and tell us that they are reducing those uh, the, the outrageous and the allowances they are giving to themselves at the expense of Nigerians. So this is the time to show leadership. That's what we are saying. And they, they have to do it. Because they don't do it, the consequences is something that we, we don't want to imagine. So it is for their own sake, because they are the major beneficiaries of this economy. If things work well, it's not for the ordinary Nigerian that is suffering even before the COVID-19. Uh, uh, COVID it is for themselves who are, who are, who are enjoying the largest of, of, of this economy. So they should save themselves. It's not saving Nigerians in the, uh, at this point in time that we are talking about. So all these things we mentioned must be done, and done now. You know, it was, we should have done it since yesterday. If Kenya can do it, and uh, other, other countries that are, are not as important as Nigeria in terms of the size of our economy are doing it, we have a big stake here. 
as far as the continent of Africa is concerned. If anything happens in Nigeria and we can't contain it, there's nobody that can contain why the spillover, spillover of, of such crisis. It will happen in Nigeria. So that is why I'm saying the government should also approach the G20, see what can we get out of the $5 trillion that they said they got to inject in the world economy. It's very important. It's crucial. We should be talking to people. We shouldn't, we shouldn't wait until when the, it is too late, as we have lost a lot of opportunities when this thing was up, approaching. You know, we pretended as if nothing was happening. As uh, officials of government will come back to this country and then go on as if they are invisible, that nothing will happen to them. It, because you are in a position doesn't mean that you cannot be sick. It, that, that's what we have seen now. And unfortunately, it has hit us below the belt. Because the Santa, the government itself, today is in, 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 in crisis in terms of health aspect of, 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 uh, of our nation. Because if our leaders are sick, how do you imagine a sick person cannot do anything for you, you know, because he is he, not uh, the owner of himself, you know. So this is what I am saying, that we should sit up, we should wake up, we should do the right thing at the right time. Because if you lose this time, you lose it forever. It can never wait for us, we can't get it back. Uh, well, Mr. Sani, I'd like to uh, refer you to back Back to something you said earlier, you said in the oil and gas sector, officials are stealing us blind. I wonder if you have uh, facts to substantiate these claims, and what are you doing with those facts that you have, very briefly. Also, the D20 countries are getting funds for themselves. This is a global pandemic. Everybody's trying to source from where they can. Yeah, I understand. Well, for the oil and gas sector, why I'm saying they're still blind, even last year, uh, there was a committee set up by the National Executive Council, uh, the, the Economic Council, rather, you know, that came up with a study which says that $1.5 billion of our money was stolen by some people through crude oil theft. This committee was headed by the governor of a do state, and they came out, this official figure, that, that was just in the last six months of the year. So by the end of the year, we have lost $3 billion to thieves who one of, nobody has been, been, been taken to the court that this is the person that was sensible that, that, that stole our crude oil. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. Wow. There's a lot, a lot happening. We don't know. Let them tell us. We don't know how much we are producing. Well, we don't know how much much. we are selling. We don't know how much has come into our account. Thank you very much, Your This is a nation that should not be Thank driving. you very much for joining us this morning on The Morning Show.